Let's get it. Let's get it. Another one back with another episode. Shout outs to everybody watching. Everyone hates Tesla. We're back with the safest car in the world is going to be Tesla. Now, who is that important for it? Look, if you got a family, I think it's very important for you to have a safe car. Now, here we go. There is no denying that Tesla makes the safest vehicle in the world, not just America, not just North America, not just the Western Hemisphere, but the world, Quake. All right, it's the world. And lives are constantly being saved by the incredible engineering that has been put in place since the beginning. Zero deaths were a result of any of these horrific crashes. Look at this crash, okay? There's been many stories of, you know, the Tesla car falling off the cliff and people are still safe. It's one of the safest vehicles out there, guys. And we're going to go over it. I'm going to let Lars explain why Tesla vehicles are safe. All right. And this is very important because a lot of people just don't know this. And if you don't care about your safety at least that much, then, hey, skip to the next video. But if you do care about your safety and your family's safety, then that's one of the reasons why you should look into ICE vehicles. I'm not trying to sit up here and be a promotion commercial, but come on. The math is mathing. I'm trying to save my life. I don't know about you, man, but just to feel some vibration underneath my cheeks, I'm not willing to risk my life. Everyone, Lars here in the Tesla Engineering Crash Safety Lab. And I wanted to talk a little bit about what makes our cars so safe. Passive safety is what happens after you get in an accident. We think about that from the beginning of a design. And what we're trying to do is absorb as much energy from whatever object you hit before it gets to the cabin. At Tesla, we always like to think we have two rules. Number one, protect the occupant. Number two, protect the battery. See rule number one, protect the occupant. The way we do that is in a progressive nature of crash structure. This is what it looks a car looks like underneath the skin. You have your bumper beam, your crush can, and then you have what we just debuted in Austin is our new front underbody casting. And what happens when you get into an accident is first the bumper beam crushes up, it progressively crushes up the crush can, absorbing the low speed energy under 20 miles per hour, and then we get into our casting. The design is such that the ribs at the beginning of the casting are thinner than the ones at the back, and we progressively increase them so that we have controlled crushing of the entire system as it goes up before it gets to the cabin here. But what else you'll and see, for you guys, you men's got an engine flying at you with pistons, rockets, all those spark plugs, whatever is inside a goddamn engine. But you got that flying at you. So you hit something, and then the force starts to shift towards the cabin, and all that metal, all that riffraff is being pushed towards you. So that could be very dangerous. But I'm allowed this guy to continue. What you'll notice is there's multiple load paths. This is a higher load path for compatibility with other vehicles on the road. Sometimes we need a lower load path if you hit a different sized object. There's space vertically to transfer the load not only through the crush rail, but also through our subframe, which pulls the drive unit down and out of the way from the cabin behind you and out of the way of the battery. But we don't just do that in a vertical sense. We also do it laterally. Your main crush rail is great if you hit something up front, but if you hit a pole or a tree just outside that crush rail, there's nothing there to absorb an energy in most cars. We put our lower load path just outside that crush rail and we actually angle it so that if you hit something here, we start to absorb the energy, and then we push the car away from whatever object you hit to make sure that you're not getting crushed into that object. Woo, come on. That's the stiff arm. We got the stiff arm in the... Uh, we got the stiff arm in the Tesla vehicle, right? Inside the frame is built a stiff arm. So if you get hit, the car stiff arm and move out the way, projecting you away from the actual object, which is a good thing, guys. You don't want to keep going in to the pole. You don't, <laughs> you know, you don't want that. You prefer the stiff arm. So we, boom, hit stick and then stiff arm. And that bar pushes you away from it. See, this is the design that goes into it. That's why we got five stars out here. Mine's is saving life. Thank you, Tesla. The backup structure is what protects the cabin after that. And we use both our door rings, the glass, and our battery to provide structure to hold all of this energy it's crushing up. But one of the things that's unique about all of Tesla's is the battery is super low. The lower center of gravity, in addition to our suspension, means our vehicles are less likely to roll over. So let's take a look at what a car looks like after a crash test and how these systems all work. So this here is actually a really special car. This is a car that was crash tested at NHTSA for a five-star rating of Model Y. And as you can see- Okay, so that's the Model Y. Shout out to the best-selling vehicle in the world in 2023. See, all that energy was absorbed up front here, stopping really at the cabin like I was talking about. And we do such a good job of that, that you can actually open the door and get out. And as you can see, aside from a little bit of white paint and some airbags blown off, the cabin looks like it was untouched. 
And that means the occupant inside has all of the room that they had before the accident to survive the accident. I mean, what gets better than that, guys? Right? You don't want to survive out here? I mean, this is very important, surviving from an accident. Let's go to the next one, Business Insider, Fair Use, Insider, Cars. They're going to talk about it. Look at that. It's about the flip. Why Tesla Model Y received a five-star crash test rating. We're at the top of the list. Just think about it, okay? I'm not forcing you to buy any Tesla products, but just think about it. Just think about it. Every time you look at your kids and your family, think about your safety. Don't think about your hatred for EVs. This is Tesla's Model Y acing one of many impact tests. Here it is again and again. The crossover received the highest marks in every test, making it one of the safest crossovers on the road. A similar designation Tesla has seen for the Model 3. But it's no surprise. The Model Y is based mostly on the Model 3's platform, and both cars received a five-star rating from the National Highway Traffic so we got all the negative publicity that you see in the media constantly talking about riffraff. And one of the things we actually need to talk about is that at least from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, we have our Model 3 and our Model Y with five star ratings. And we're, and we're killing it in every sector. Traffic Safety Administration. This is what makes Tesla's first crossover so safe. In the event of a collision, protecting passenger survival space is paramount and all modern cars are designed to do so. But EVs have a huge advantage. The absence of an engine provides ample space for a crumple zone and frontal impacts. This can See, and so for guys, when I actually speak about why just EVs are good, and especially Tesla, it's not coming from climate change or anything. I'm trying to change your life, all right? Skip the climate change. You might not even be around if you're in the wrong car and get in a bad accident, all right? So climate change is irrelevant to you because you're out of here. But one thing that does matter is EVs matter for safety, right? So you want to worry about climate change or the change in your body and your life status. <laughs> Those are two top priorities that men need to think about. So focusing on getting the EV, okay, not Tesla. I don't know who else, but okay, you still want a vehicle that's going to protect your family, that's safe for you, that you can rely on. Accidents do happen. So for me, I'd rather need it or have it and not need it than need it and not have it i'd rather have the extra rating i'd rather have the extra stars i know about you but i used to always do international traveling a lot i used to look up the airlines and make sure that they had high safety ratings most people probably don't even know what the website is to go check out airlines and see what their history is on safety ratings but me i've always looked at, looked at that you know because i traveled all over the world i'm like whose plane am i getting on you know what, what what is this company's record? I want to make sure <laughs> that I'm not getting on some, you know, janky plane. So net net, the same thing comes for cars. And if I got to switch from the way it's fueled from energy to gas to save a life or get an extra star or be in the safest car on some of the unsafest roads just due to people's habits today on their cell phone, talking, yapping, texting, texting. On your cell phone while you're driving, like, come on, get real. But this is what people do. This can be seen in the Model Y's frontal impact test. When the Man, hold on. Have you guys ever seen somebody like filming a YouTube video and they're in their car and they're driving and talking to you and shooting a whole YouTube video? Like, that's the nonsense I'm talking about. Just driving. Yeah, yo. So today we're going to be talking about the thing for the Fed and what it is with the interest rate. And today it's a lot going on in the United States, guys. I know you hear me like, what in the world, bro? You better drive that car and focus on the road. So I'm, yeah, I'm getting into the car. That's the safest because man's out here shooting entire promo videos while driving. When the vehicle is slammed headfirst into a barrier at 35 miles per hour, as the hood of the car slams into the barrier, it crumples and absorbs the impact preventing the passenger cell from collapsing and harming the dummy inside. Since the Model Y is larger than the Model 3, its body structure has been fortified to account for the additional mass of the vehicle. This results in less of the hood crumpling for the Model Y, creating a larger survival space for occupants. In side impact tests, the crossover has significantly less space to absorb the forces of a crash. This is where you can really see Tesla's structure do a lot of heavy lifting. The pillars, side sills, and fortified battery pack mitigate the intrusion of a crash, 
This gives the side airbag enough time to deploy and cushion the impact on passengers. This is tested in two ways. The first is a side barrier test in which a sled that acts as a car is rammed into the driver's side of the Model Y at 38 and a half miles per hour. This simulates a T-bone collision. Here, you can see just how rigid the Model Y structure is. The sides crumple less than the hood in the frontal crash, again, preserving survival space for the occupants. The second test, the side- So that's good for the T-bone. You always gotta watch out for the T-bone, right? Still has a crumple zone on side that, and now we're gonna get it to the side pole. Let's get it. Side pole impact simulates an accident with the tree or pole. In this test, the impact is much more concentrated, which pushes the boundaries of a car's structural integrity. The roof and side sills prevent the impact from protruding further into the driver's survival space. While there's no data on the impact from protruding- I mean, guys, look how dangerous that is. This is what I'm saying. This decision is very serious. And just like, just this, people just don't realize how dangerous driving a car can be and accidents can be. And look at that damage that's just being done to the car. This is your life on the line. And we're arguing? <laughs> I'm ready to drive, drive a gas-powered vehicle. What? What's that got to do with crashing, though? How's that going to save you in a crash? Nah, man, man's want to just keep the safest route for me. There's no data on the Model Y's roof strength. We can look to the Model 3 to get a better understanding of how the roof is able to absorb the brunt of the impact in this test. In 2019, the Model 3, the same platform as the Model Y, earned the highest strength-to-rate ratio of any EV the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety had ever tested, resisting more than 20,000 pounds. So here we go once again, being the, being the best, right? Even that strength right there, the best vehicle, period. It's that same rigidity that awarded the Model Y five stars in the side pull test. At just 7.9%, the Model Y's rollover risk is one of the lowest ever recorded for an SUV by the NHTSA. This is directly related to the car's low center of gravity, thanks to the heavy battery pack that sits in the floor of the vehicle. In Tesla's in-house test, you can see how the Model Y continues to return to an upright position. Even See, upright position. The gravity, the battery just being extremely heavy, that it keeps that gravity, that leveling out, allowing the vehicle not... I'm not trying to flip, guys. If you're trying to flip... And you want to go ahead and get your alligator death roll on, then go ahead and buy other car. Just because, again, you want gas to power your car. But net, net, here we go. Just making smart decisions so that we can live. Is that is that too much to ask for? Even when it's shot off the side of this hill. For Tesla, safety is engineered into the design of every car. Look at that. Even when it went off the hill. Look at that. Let's go back. Went off the hill. A regular car. Somebody's flipping. They're gone. They're flipping. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the roll. But here we go. We got our car negative. We ain't flipping. Boop, boop. And the same thing with this, right? Hit the dirt. Oh, my gosh. That's going to flip. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be terrible. Negative. Negative. Even when it's shot off the side of this hill. For Tesla, safety is engineered into the design of every car. It has been improving the architecture of its vehicles since the Model S in 2012. Building the Model Y from the Model 3's platform all but guaranteed a safe vehicle. The further fortified structure and larger crumple zones are a testament to its commitment to vehicle safety. Now, most people say, okay, well, this is not going to happen to me. That's not going to happen to me. Guys, let me just show you some infield footage because you could you could start to forget. Look at this nonsense. This is how people follow people on the highway. Look at this. If you see the lane in the left-hand side and you see how that person just right up against their bumper. Okay, you want to drive in the fast lane and somebody's in your way. But to do things like this guy, this is ridiculous. And this is the people's behaviors because they're having a mood or, or they're having a bad day. And they're just following people like this and doing nonsense. Someone's tailgating right behind you. Like, that, that's ridiculous. But Jennifer's now, good thing he didn't flip into the lane. Good thing he didn't flip over and go into the other lane. But here, you guys got to listen about tailgating. I, I get out the way when people do this nonsense. You saw how dramatic that video is. And what that person in front did was something a lot of people do when they see they're being tailgated. Right. They slam on the brakes. Mm -hmm. Tell us what was wrong about that. Well, and see, slamming on the brakes. A lot of people do that. 
And that's because of emotion. You get mad, you get angry. Me, keep my composure, switch lanes, get out of their way, let them go. But some people, a lot of people, a good amount of people are going to hit them brakes on you. And then you have those fools also driving up on you. So whether you're slamming on the brakes or not, it's still a threat. And this is all just human emotion, people being angry. Well, so the tailgating is wrong. There's no doubt about it. It's very risky. But you should never really use your motor vehicle for any sort of retaliation. He could just as easily have taken out the car next to him, the guy that was filming. But it would be horrible to find out that you were responsible for hurting someone else. So you should never break check. You should never break check. At the magazine's Auto Test Center in Connecticut, Jennifer also advised against slowing down to annoy tailgaters. That drives them to really want to make an, an evasive mover, maneuver around you. So if you shouldn't hit the brakes or slow down, what, get out of the way. What should you do in this dangerous situation? So you look in the rearview mirror, you see someone's right on your butt, like the person behind us. Right. <laughs> what do you do? Don't let them push you to go faster than you want to be going. Just let them ride there. They're not going to ram into you. They're going to push you and they're going to flash their high beams even perhaps to tell you to get out of the way. When you have an opportunity, a safe opportunity to move over, you signal and you just get out of their way and let them go. Good advice so this doesn't happen to you. And y'all wonder why I want to be in a safe car because people just really do this. I'd rather save my life. <laughs> I'd rather have Tesla looking out for me to save my life. So guys, again, just look into the vehicle, look into EVs. I think that is undisputed at this time, according to a lot of agencies, that we're out here winning. I need everybody to clear out. Also, we got bulletproof cars out here. Of course, up to a certain caliber. So that doesn't mean you can go out there and just cop a cyber truck and then get somebody to shoot a rocket launcher at you. <laughs> you know, none of that nonsense. But definitely we have some of the safest vehicles when it comes down to Tesla, cyber truck. Model Y, Model 3, the safety ratings are very high, at least with a Model 3 and a Model Y. And if you want to protect your family and you want to be safe, I think it's very interesting to go ahead and check those cars out. This is an advantage. This is an advantage of not just Tesla specifically, but EVs. So I'm not coming at you guys from an angle of saving the environment. I'm coming out the angle that's prioritizing your life. Save your life. You see out here with the actual Cybertruck, also, watch out for the Tommy gun. So if you got the Cybertruck, you could possibly protect yourself from a Tommy gun, okay? <laughs> at least if it hits the door. So this is just the interesting types of features that you get at Tesla when you get one of their cars, is that the safety ratings is there to protect your family, to protect your loved ones, and protect your friends and whoever else may or may not be a passenger in the future. So just have a second thought when you're actually thinking about buying a car and when you're buying your car you're actually saying if i buy a tesla specifically i'm actually gonna make a bet on saving my own life in the future because you've seen the tailgating people out here getting angry for a lot of different reasons on the road road rage at an all-time high so i see you guys on the next installment remember the safest car on the planet is a tesla and if anybody else is telling you different that's possibly because everyone hates tesla like, share, subscribe, and then hit that notification bell so when there's another video about Tesla be just so amazing as it is, you guys will get it. USA all day and Tesla all day. See you guys on the next one. Peace.